Swift 6 is right around the corner, and it is time that we all start running our projects with strict concurrency checks enabled. However, if you do this when you have dependencies or if you're a library author, this poses challenges. My name is Donnie Walls, and in this video, we are going to take a look at how we can leverage this special add pre-concurrency declaration to gradually transition over into strict concurrency checks and Swift 6. Make sure that you subscribe and like the video before we continue and dig right into pre-concurrency. Pre-concurrency is a declaration that we can add to functions, types, protocols, and imports. Depending on what we add it to, it will have different effects. So let's go on ahead and take a look at imports first. We can write add pre-concurrency import statements for modules that don't adopt strict concurrency yet. For example, you might be using a module in your project and you want to adopt strict concurrency already, but that module that you're importing does not have everything enabled or set up for strict concurrency yet. Maybe they haven't adopted sendable yet, or maybe they're not using actors where they should be using actors. When we do this and we import a module that is not updated yet and we enable warnings, we might get errors that read a little bit like this. Add at pre-concurrency to suppress sendable related warnings from module my module. When Xcode tells you this, it's essentially saying you are trying to adopt strict concurrency, but that module that you're importing isn't. So if you want to silence any warnings about this, you can do that by adding at pre-concurrency to your import. And here's what that looks like. We have add pre-concurrency, import my module. And as soon as we add that to our file, for that specific file and that specific import, Xcode knows that any sendability related errors from that module or its types should be suppressed because we do not own that module and we do not want to have our compile prevented by something that we don't own and we don't control. This is especially useful if you, you can't make any changes to your code. For example, you're using Apple's built-in frameworks that are not updated yet or something that is completely owned by a third party. You can go ahead and fix your own errors and warnings in the meantime, while you wait for somebody else to update the module that you don't own, which is really, really useful. So that's add pre-concurrency import. Let's see what it means to add pre-concurrency to types or functions or enums or really anything at all. When we do that, we are library authors, but if you're making an app, you're probably not going to be adding pre-concurrency to your classes or to your, uh, to your functions because you're not shipping a module that needs to be used by somebody else. Right? So if you're a library author or an SDK developer or something like that, and you want to start adopting strict concurrency, you're going to be exposing functions and classes that you have now made sendable or that you've maybe added a main actor annotation to. And having that in place can actually cause problems for people using your code. And maybe the clients that are using your SDK are not ready to invest the amount of time needed to actually also adopt Swift 6 and strict concurrency in its entirety. We can use pre-concurrency to have our modules safely adopt Swift 6 without breaking your clients and without making your updates breaking changes, which is huge for SDK authors. So imagine that you start off with code that looks a little bit like this. We have a public class catalog view model. And there's really nothing special going in here, going on in here. What if we want to update this code to look a little bit more like this? Because now it's main actor annotated, which means that we can only use this view model from the main actor, which might be exactly what we want from our clients or from our SDK. Completely reasonable to do, but if we do this and somebody uses our uh, view model, which is now main actor annotated, which means that we're going to be doing work on the main actor, um, somebody that's using this view model will have to update their code, which they might not be able to do at the time. Right, so what could happen is this. We might have written something that looks a little bit like this, where we use our catalog view model. Easy enough, we've imported the module that defines this view model. It's not on the slide, but that's fine. and if we update our module, suddenly Xcode is going to give us an error that looks like this. Call to main actor isolated initializer in it in a synchronous non-isolated context, or call to main actor isolated instance method load, load book in a synchronous non-isolated context. 
This is a problem because now we, as users of this SDK, will have to update our code to start using the main actor. And that can snowball into having to make many, many changes to your project, and we might not be ready to do that. So it's a pretty serious breaking change to start adopting uh, modern concurrency uh, for your SDKs if you cannot support older ways of doing things. So if we add pre-concurrency to our uh, view model, which looks like this, add pre-concurrency actor public final class, now any project that imports this module will not have any problems using our uh, model without concurrency. All right, so as long as my project does not opt into strict, strict concurrency checking, I can use modules that have opted in and that are using the main actor without having to update myself. So that's really nice. Once I enable the checks though, I will get warnings and errors, so I will have to fix them at that point. But until then, I can continue to use my newer versions of dependencies without those new main actor annotations and everything breaking my app. Because what will happen is the compiler will actually treat our module or our function or a class as if we've never applied the main actor or sendability at all. Right? So when we build this module for a project that doesn't use strict concurrency checking, the compiler is simply going to remove that main actor annotation altogether, at least call site facing. And so we won't know it's there. And that means that we're going to have a stable ABI, which means that we can use this dependency without having source breaking changes after the dependency adopted strict concurrency. So if you're a library author, you'll really want to think about applying pre-concurrency to your classes, functions, and everything else to make sure that people using your code are able to do that without having to make significant changes to their own code base. Let's summarize. We can use pre-concurrency imports when we want to update our own project, but not all of our dependencies have been updated yet. So we can tell the compiler, we know that this is not updated, but it's not ours. This is a pre-concurrency module, so please do not bother me about any warnings resulting from that module. And on the other side of the spectrum, we have library authors who can mark their objects and functions and everything with pre-concurrency so that they can actually start adopting sendability and actors without breaking their clients, which can be really, really useful. I hope this video was informative to you. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe button, and everything else and I will see you in the next one.